Hi everybody, Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying a bass fly. It's a two foot locks <coughs> eel worm jig. Very, fairly easy to tie uh, and very effective though, worth having in your box. As always, I will put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for those of you who would be interested in supporting the channel, accessing the giveaways. Uh, and getting the members only content on Patreon. So I've got my hook and device. It's an upper hide salmon hook. I'm just going to start my thread. I'm using uh, 6 odd flat wax nylon and chartreuse just matches the the colour of the layered dubbing. Um, I'm going to tie in a pair of bead chain eyes and make sure they're on the underside and take several crossing wraps through them and then just check make sure they're aligned nice I'll take some wraps between the eye and the shank and then over the eye And I'll come in with a, a few lock and X wraps and a few between the eyes and the shank again. Right. Now because of the return style eye with these they're, they're more solid than they often are, but still got a bit of super glue on there. And I'll run it right down the shank just to make the fly a bit more durable. Now I'm just going to coat the shank with thread all the way back to just got to start, start coming around the bend. And then I'm ready for the tail. So I've got two cock saddle feathers here and I'm going to put them, I'm going to line them up so the tips are even and I've got them so they're sitting together, right? you don't need to sit and tie them splayed, although you can if you wish. Now I want like three shank lengths here, so there's one, two, three off the back, so about there. And I've just got to catch this at the front and just tie everything back. Making sure Making sure that they're nice and straight and they're on top of the shank, not on the side. Right? I mean they will, they will sort of separate when you fish them a wee bit in the water but I don't want them splayed right? I want it to be sort of leaning towards itself Cut this just behind the eyes Okay, we tidy up right, that's, I mean there's actually the glue's still a wee bit tacky under them as well so now I'm tying a black and chartreuse first and so I'm going to grab a couple of chartreuse hackles and I want these oh, a third to half the length of the the black right I mean, you could do an all black version if you wish, it's up to yourself. And I'll tie these so they're splayed. And if you notice there, I'm going to catch in not just the stem, right? I've stripped the stem to the tie in, but I am going to catch some hackle fibre 
as a tie down, right? Like that. And what that does, it just sort of forces those f first few fibres of hackle back the way and helps to create a wee bit of that sort of skirt effect. <coughs> Same again, just trim out the length of the body. Tie everything down. Now, the original version, I believe the hackle, the body hackle was tied in by the tip and wound forward, but I don't like that. It's, it makes for a less durable fly, so I'm going to palmer it properly um, and use a rib to secure it. So I've got some 2x, tap it here, and the old cheap stuff will do. We're going to tie it in so it's slightly longer than the hook. Fold it back and wrap down. Set that there, and then I'll get my weed guard. Double weed guard on this because the fly does fish hook point down. Um, but with the salmon, a pie salmon hook, you get a, it does create a really nice jigging motion. And to be honest, with the double weed guard, it's it's perfectly, it's perfectly good enough. You know, you, you, it's not that snaggy. It will come through most. weed. Now, I don't know how well you can see, but I've tied that so that the nylon's actually on the side of the shank and slightly below the halfway point. And that's just to guarantee that it comes on either side of the hook point when the fly's finished. I'm just tidying everything up here. And then I'm going to come in again with some more super glue. Right. Again, we'll try to build really durable flies um, that will last several fish, you know. Um, I mean, it's not making any difference to the actual tying process, it's just adding durability. So the body's dubbing. Um, the original, I believe, was a a blend of all lawn dubbing, which I don't think you can still get. Um, I've not seen it for years. Um, and natural fur. Uh, but it doesn't really matter, it's up to you. This is, a, I've blended here some SLF and Rabbit. Um, to give me a nice, a nice mix. It's a bit spiky, dubs quite easily. Got a slight kind of shine, but not too much. So, just get that dubbing started, wind it forward. I don't care if there's wet or dry dubbing, wet or dry glue here. Just banging it forward. Creating a kind of taper as I go. Just need a bit more until I come to behind the eyes. Slide it up. I'll stop there. I've just left myself a couple of millimetres behind the eye. I'm ready for the body hackle. I'm taking a nice webby, a nice webby um, saddle hackle. It can be quite long in the fibre, right? You don't need to be stuck with this. It should be the gap width and a half or anything, right? That's nonsense. Um, that's just some daft stylistic thing. You want as much movement and fish attracting this as you can get. So I just secured that and folded the stem back. And I'm ready to wind it. So I'm just going to wind this hackle. Just using my fingers. 
Now you don't need to have a lot of turns, but I like it to be a long hackle that's soft in the fibre, but fairly lightly palmered. There's one, to five turns or something there, right? Take my rubber across it, catch it. And then just bring your rib forward. Several turns, nice and quick through. The quicker you go, the less likely you are to catch any of the, the fibres. And then when I get to the front, I'm just going to sweep everything back. Couple of wraps there. come across my thread. Now, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the hackle stem. I'm actually going to wrap the thread forward to in front of the bead chain and then fold that back and secure it nice and tightly. So that was folded at the initial tie and there's a bit of glue over that as well. And then I folded it again here it, it, the rib can never pull out, right? So that, look, even if the hackle breaks, it's it's secured several times, and it's never got to be coming slack. It's got to make it a very tough fly. Then, now you don't you don't need to do this. You can keep it all, as I said, the same colour. But I'm going to just add another wee hot spot at the front here around these eyes, just fluorescent yellow dubbin, same colour as the bead chain or paint it. I'll just figure it through the eyes. Build it up a bit. You know, you don't need to be shy with this, it can be quite... I would try not to catch any of the hackle. Build up a, a wee hot spot there at the front. And then if you like, and I do, I just come in, get a wee brush. Whip off this uh, hackle tip, snap there. So just turn my weight. Then it's just a case of securing the weed guard. Catch it on one side first, then the other. Now these double weed guards they're quite short and they're quite stiff because of the shape of the loop in that so what I like to do is I'll take my bodkin and I'm going to put it in the loop so that they're even put it tight so that it's the minimum amount, right? It's just like the bodkin. The bodkin's touching the underside of the hook point. Which means that there's enough loop there protecting the protecting the hook from weeds or whatever. But the minimum amount um for a fish to like push away, right, and still have the fly be weedless. I mean, you can mess about, you can just make sure everything's how you like it. Now, to secure this and stop it moving on you, the first thing I like to do is get a bit of super glue on my thread. I mean, 
make sure everything's how I like it. Just be careful, it can it can fight you a wee bit, which this is doing. When you're happy. When you're happy, you can come in and tighten up the wet thread there. That locks everything in. I mean, it is still possible. You can, if it's moved on you, you can just force it a wee bit there. I mean, you don't have much play, but you do have a wee bit. And then, I'll fold this back. Trim that away. Got to come in with a tiny bit of dubbing. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I, I just don't like that sort of ugliness here. I'm just going to very, very small amount of dubbing there just to clear that, tidy that up a bit. And then, quick, quick finish. And another, because you're going to be. This is going to be rubbing on sticks and rocks and stuff, it's a, a bottom fly. Make sure it's nice and tight. Trim it away. Leave it with a super glue. And that's you, you're done. You can finish it off with some varnish once the super glue is dry. And you have a very, very effective bass fly. So, there you go. I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If it was, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tell guys. Bye.